Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. About five minutes ago I got a question from one of my subscribers from India. And I have about 50% of my subscribers from India. And these numbers are constantly growing because population of India is constantly growing. Okay, I'm joking. So here's the problem. The recognition sequence for the restriction endonuclease, the name is not important, is and here's the sequence um, where R is any purine and Y is any pyrimidine base. In a truly random DNA sequence, what will be the average distance measured in base pairs between successive uh, ASTW1 cut sites? And here's the four answers to choose from. So basically how we are going to approach uh, this problem. So imagine that here we have uh, DNA, uh, of course double-stranded DNA, but uh, restriction and the nuclease would use uh, sequence on the uh, one of the strands. So uh, we put the sequence only one of the strand. Uh, of course uh, we would have another sequence that is going to be complementary to the sequence on the other strand of the DNA, but it doesn't make sense for us to write a sequence of the restriction site of the other strand of the DNA, because uh, we know that uh, we would have complementary bases on the other strand, and basically we use only uh, that strand that we call coding strand of the DNA uh, in order to specify uh, which uh, bases uh, such endonuclease would cut or would uh, attach and would cut. As we told, uh, the sequence of the DNA is random, so it can be any of the four bases, say adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and so on. So millions and millions of combinations are possible. And imagine now uh, that we have uh, so how many? One, two, three, four, five, six positions. So let's uh, define each position of the base in this restriction site as an um, empty box. So three, four, five, and six boxes. So what is the probability that in the first box we would have um, guanine and probability would be one out of four because we can get here with the adenine, thymine, guanine or cytosine and probability that uh, here in this position we would have guanine would be one out of four so probability would be 25 percent and probability that um, in second position we are going to have R stands for the uh, purine and two out of four bases would be purines and another two bases would be pyrimidines and probability that here we would have purine uh, would be two out of four or one half so let's put one half here that here we are going to have purine and R stand for the purine and the third base have to be cytosine and probability that the third uh, base would be cytosine would be one quarter then guanine one quarter and then Y stands for pyrimidine or two bases out of four or one half and the last one would be cytosine and cytosine would have uh, one out of four probability and now as you see we have uh, six independent probabilities and now in order to find uh, probability for this sequence to happen together in this particular order we have to multiply all these independent probabilities and what we are going to get 
and we are going to get uh, one quarter multiplied by one half and we are going to get one eighth here and one eighth multiplied by one quarter and we are going to get uh, one over 32 here and 132 multiplied by one quarter and we are going to get uh, one uh, out of uh, 128 here multiplied by one half we are going to get one uh, 256 here and if we multiply by one quarter we are going to get one over 1024 so every 1024 uh, basis we would have randomly such sequence uh, like this one but this is not going to be our final answer because uh, DNA is double stranded so if we would have 5 prime and here and 3 prime and here uh, the other strand of the DNA would have 5 prime and here and 3 prime and here and if say our sequence would have 5 prime and here of the restriction uh, site and 3 prime and here we expect that uh, in the fragment of 1024 bases we would have uh, two such sequences one on one of the strands of the DNA and another such sequence on the other strand of the DNA. So 1 over 1024 we have to multiply by 2 and we are going to get 1 over 512. Now it would be up to you which answer to choose. It is a tricky question. Let's uh, read it again. In a truly random DNA sequence, what will be uh, the average distance measured in base pairs uh, between successive AST W1 cut sites? Because of this word successive, I would prefer the first answer, answer A. If the question uh, would specify what the fragment length would be, then I would take into account that uh, this sequence may happen on one strand of the DNA and the other strand of the DNA. So we would have uh, a cut here and a cut here. And so in this case I would choose the answer B. But because of this word successive, uh, I would understand it as uh, one uh, side, then the other side, then the other side and uh, we have to count uh, base pairs between such sites on the same strand of the DNA. But you also have to keep in mind that the same sequence may happen uh, also in the other strand of the DNA but probably we wouldn't call this successive. But anyway my uh, last note would be don't be shy if you would be confused about uh, which answer to choose on your exam, just raise your hand and talk to professor. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.